resident observes a third year in office spends time with Rupununi residents, renewable energy should be at top of Ghana's agenda, Canadian High Commissioner. Gaia launches fuel handling facility at CJIA, and Guyanese will go to the polls in 2015. With this in the news capsule, I'm Janelle Carter. Good evening. Canadian High Commissioner to Guyana, Dr. Nicole Giles, highlighted the importance of cheap, reliable energy as an economic driver when she addressed the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industries Award and dinner at the Pegasus Hotel recently, pointing to the fact that the cost of renewable technology, particularly solar and wind, has fallen dramatically. She said that renewable energy presents a huge opportunity for Guyana to begin diversifying its natural energy supply. The potential for renewable energy is growing fast around the world. According to a five-year outlook published yesterday on December 3rd by the International Energy Agency, renewable energy will edge out natural gas as the biggest source of electricity after coal by 2016. This is nothing short of a remarkable development. She, however, advised about maintaining a balance in energy consumption and in sustainable management of environmental resources. President Donald Ramatar observed three years in office on December 3rd, 2014, and as part of his celebration, the head of state took time off to spend with Rupununi residents in Region 9. During his visit, the president met with residents of several villages, including Aishalton, Sand Creek, Achuib, and Sawariwal. The president also took time out to interact with students of the Sand Creek Secondary School. Given the increase in inflow of flights through the Tredyagan International Airport, the Guyana Oil Company Limited has commissioned a fuel depot at the airport to marry. President Donna Ramatar, who officially commissioned the facility on Sunday, said that it will see a drastic increase in terms of the flow of traffic at CJIA, contributing significantly to the growing tourism sector. It is also essential for another branch of our economy. Apart from being a hub, it is essential to the development of the tourist sector. It is one of the most fundamental investments that we have to make if our tourism sector is going to flower out and reach its potential. Meanwhile, also present at the event were Minister of Finance Dr. Ashni Singh, Minister of Public Works Robson Ben, and several aviation sector stakeholders. This U.S. $3.5 million project is phase one of an overall venture, which comprises the construction of the terminal at Providence East Bank, Demerara. President Donald Ramatar on Saturday announced that Guyanese will vote in general and regional elections to elect a new government in early 2015. This announcement came after the leader of the opposition formally declined his invitation for talks during the prorogation period. As he had earlier indicated, the president said he would not extend the prorogation period. The date will be confirmed for those elections very early in 2015, said the president. The head of state explained that the decision to confirm a date in 2015 was intended to ensure that the Guyanese Christmas spirit isn't dampened. On Sunday, December 6th, Guyana joined with the rest of the world in observing International Civil Aviation Day. On the occasion, a new stamp was launched in honor of the women in aviation at a ceremony which was held at Culgrain House, Camp Street, Georgetown. In addition, individuals who completed studies over the past four years at the Air Traffic Training School in the area of aeronautical information management, air traffic control, and area controllers were also presented with certificates. Awards were also given out to several individuals for a long service. This year's observances was held under the theme Cooperating on Global Aviation Progress, celebrating 70 years of the Chicago Convention. Thank you for watching this Union News Capsule. Do join us again. I'm Janelle Carter. Good night.